In this video we're going to compare three different functions, sum, subtotal and aggregate. And we're going to perform calculations on this table here. We've got our products, the leftmost column. We've got ranges for each product. We've got sales values for 2012 and I've got little subtotal functions that give me subtotals for each uh, product range. I've also got my sales values for 2013 and they've been bought over from this table here uh, using a VLOOKUP function and you can see that some of the products uh, are not being sold in 2013 so we get an error uh, value come up and we want to see how these functions cope with this scenario. I've also got some filters so I can filter on different ranges. So here we go. Uh, let's use our sum function first of all to add up the sales in 2012. So equal sum. Uh, select that range there. Press enter. Right, okay. So straight away you've probably worked out that we've doubled up on our figures here because we've included the subtotals as well as the individual sales on each product. So what I've really got to do is go in and select individual ranges separating each range with a comma uh, which will be a total pain especially if the column is very very long take me all day so um, if i copy that across to 2013 it doesn't cope at all because i've got an error value it returns an error value so let's go to a subtotal function so um, I'm going to use, uh, we've got 11 different functions we can use here. I'm going to use 9, uh, which just adds things up, comma. And I'm going to highlight my range, press enter, and it doesn't double up at all. Um, it copes with the fact that I've got these nested subtotals and ignores them. Now, I'm actually going to use subtotal again, but this time I'm going to use 109 which will ignore hidden rows. Let's see how that works. So press enter, so it looks like I've got the same answer, but if I hit a row, so for example, if I hit this row, um, you can see that uh, subtotal 109 actually ignores the hidden row, whereas the others are still included in it. I'll just undo, so we get back. Now if I was to copy both of those subtotal functions over to sales 2013 um, it doesn't cope very well at all so we still haven't solved the problem with 2013 let's try a little filter on uh, this range though let's say i wanted to look at uh, just the garden sales you can see some functions ignored my um, filter but both the subtitle functions have responded to the filter so that's pretty good so I've nearly solved everything except these error values that keep coming up. And this is where aggregate will help us. So let's have a look at aggregates. So um, here you'll see that actually we've got 19 different functions we can perform. Uh, but I'm going to go for some again. Comma. Now what I get is then this options argument. So let's look at what I can do. I can ignore nested subtotals and aggregate functions. I can ignore hidden rows, nested subtotals and aggregate functions. Uh, I can ignore error values, nested subtotals and ag aggregate functions. I can ignore hidden rows, error values, nested subtotals and aggregate functions. So that's pretty much doing everything. I think that's what we want. Let's double click on that comma. Then let's select our range. Let's enter. Let's return a little bit of formatting here. Copy it across. Voila! I get my answer. So the aggregate function does one better than the subtotal function because it can cope with the error values. Let's see if it copes with our filters. Yep, it's coped with the filter fine. And let's see if it copes with hidden rows. Another one. That was an error value one. Yes, it's coped with the hidden row as well. Okay, so aggregate function does everything that the subtotal function does, but also copes with error values.